We all love eating food, but making our favorite dish is not always our cup of tea. We need a list of ingredients, then we need to prepare it well, and then only we can enjoy the meal that we want. That's all good, isn't it? But it's easy to cook for a single person. What if you're throwing a party and you need to cook for 50 people? That is going to be hard. And for that, we might need to have a recipe that can help us ensure that we can bring in all the ingredients that are required and which would also ensure that we can cook for a larger group. Interesting. With a recipe and a quantified ingredients list in front of us, we can become a master chef. or well some of us can because we know how much we need to spend and how much we need to use quantity and its proportions let's remove this for now and think of the dish to be our own application deployment so we create our application and when it comes to its deployment we might deploy them manually or we might have to write code for individual deployment resources may it be compute may it be storage or even the network but what if i told you there is a way for us to write code and it could as well be a single code configuration that would help us deploy our application on demand and not just on our own account but also use the same code to deploy across multiple accounts yes that's right and that's where infrastructure as code comes into play and that's where we will talk about terraform in this journey for infrastructure deployment we will cover the most important devops tools like terraform cloud formation and ci cd and i welcome all of you to the new devops trail on pythonic and let's start off with terraform and if you are ready let's begin when you think of iac or infrastructure as code you need to remember this very important thing when you want to provision resources like compute storage or network or even deploy your application without manual intervention you need infrastructure as code yes that is why it's mentioned here that iac is the process of managing and provisioning infrastructure through code instead of doing it through the manual processes as a developer you want to focus all your strength on improving the application as an architect you need to ensure the application you are going to deliver meets the standards of quality availability resilience and optimization and as a devops engineer or a cloud engineer you need to ensure the delivery and deployment of the application are as smooth and simple as possible considering the design that you have for your product or application might go through a change or it could have additional requirements in iac or infrastructure as code the configuration files are created that contain your infrastructure specifications like what instance type you are going to use how much memory would you need what type of scaling does it have how access is provided to the application attaching load balancing and you would ask me then what is the importance of configuration management tools are they same as iac and that's a very good point and yes we make use of iac and configuration management tools in tandem but uh, they have their own specific purposes but i would like to list some of the important iac and configuration management tools like puppet chef and ansible which are configuration management tools and terraform cloud formation which are your iac tools uh, you might be using other tools as well which you can list out in the comment section as well that you might be using right now when it comes to iac you being the developer or devops engineer or cloud engineer you might write the infrastructure code as per the architecture design of your application you will be using a version control tool like git or bitbucket or svn to ensure that the correct version and the correct code is being used when it comes to the deployment and when it comes to the deployment you might be using a ci cd to a automation tool that pulls that code and manages your infrastructure may it be on the cloud or even your on premise location your iac could be terraform your version control could be git svn or bitbucket your automation or deployment tools could be jenkins and your deployment could be on the cloud service providers like aws google cloud or even azure or even vmware when it comes to the on premise services or on premise infrastructure let us take an example of a real time aws project which is plagiarism or 
plagiarism detection. So this is a simple application to detect plagiarism in your account. If in case you're not aware of what plagiarism is, plagiarism is presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own, yes, with or without their consent by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. So it is like you wrote an article and that article was already published and you might have taken some points from that article with or without the knowledge of the original author. And that's stealing and that's a very bad thing. And this application can help you detect if there is any plagiarism in the document that you have. As a user, you upload the document to the application, which gets stored on the S3 bucket. Then when it gets uploaded, it triggers a step function, which has a Lambda function that takes in the document and extracts data from it and feeds it or feeds its text to a pre-trained algorithm. We won't talk about the algorithm. It is something that's beyond the scope right now. And then we perform the comparison using the index vector and similarity algorithms at Amazon Elasticsearch. And then we return the result with the plagiarized document reference if found guilty. This is a simple architecture. Real-time architectures are way more complex than this. But individually, if you see, this also has a lot of components like S3 bucket, step functions, lambda functions, SageMaker calls, Elasticsearch calls, and even calling a event bridge rule. If we have to deploy this application once, you could as well do it manually and it would be way easier that way. But if you need to deploy it on multiple accounts, what if for every account, the way we deploy has its own requirements? That would be really a handful. And thus automating this would be far more cost effective, both in terms of time and cost. And Cost effectiveness always doesn't come with the money that you associate it with. It also comes with the time. And that is why infrastructure as code right now is one of the most on-demand tools when it comes to DevOps and cloud engineers. And yes, we are developers. And as a developer, we write Terraform code to test our application deployment, and which is also used by DevOps in their work while they deploy the same architecture or and when they work on the maintenance or the versioning or the higher level deployments. So it is something that can be used by the cloud engineers as well as well as the DevOps engineers and anyone who would want to automate the process of the infrastructure deployment. But you must be still thinking, what is the difference between IAC and configuration management tools then? Okay, that's fair. Let's talk about it. So configuration management is what the name suggests. It's about configuring our servers. It could be like you want to install an update on the servers, or it could be like you want to shut down a list of servers, or it could be that you want a specific configuration to match a list of servers or similar tasks like this. Here you fetch the list of server credentials like SH key and the IP addresses that you want to work on. You create tasks on your configuration management tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, and using that, you execute the commands and tasks on the servers that you want. It could be a list of servers like 50 or 100. But you might say, then the configuration management tool can also be used in place of IAC tools like Terraform. Yes, you can, but there is a very interesting thing that makes tools like Terraform stand out. So let's suppose we are the ops team and we are using config management to update our servers. So we configure and deploy updates on our servers and patch them using tasks. One fine day, this guy comes in and changes the configuration of one of our servers manually. Now, how do we know the original state of the server? That is why we need a tool that can preserve the original state of the deployment. And that is something which tools like Terraform can do for you. And that is why we make use of config management and infrastructure as code tools in tandem to effectively make use of the facilities provided by each of these tools. Now let's look at some of the differences. First, we have tools like Terraform, CloudFormation, when it comes to infrastructure as code or resource deployment. And on the other hand, we have Ansible, Puppet and Chef, which help us with configuration management. Next, IAC is helpful when it comes to automating and deploying infrastructure resources on demand, as we already discussed. And on the other hand, we have configuration management, which helps configure the already provisioned resources. That's a very important point, which helps 
configure the already provisioned resources like the servers that were already provisioned. Next, we have IAC which helps us provision infrastructure resources such as compute, network, storage, etc. And on the other hand, we have config management that helps configure applications with the servers provisioned by IAC. Yes, configuration management helps configure applications with the server provisioned by IAC. But the most important thing is that both follow the principle of idempotency. And I'm not sure like how we can pronounce it well, like idempotency or idempotency or idempotency. <laughs> and you might ask me, what is idempotency? So let's talk about that. If you don't know what idempotency is, in simple words, idempotency is a property of some operation such that no matter how many times you execute them, you achieve the same result. Quite confusing or not? So let's suppose you write a REST API to GET or let's suppose you write a REST API for GET to retrieve a data set from the application. Would the result change if you keep on executing the same operation or same GET operation? No, of course, it would not. It won't because it is idempotent. Your execution doesn't affect the result. The result might change due to an external factor like a post operation done on that particular query, but the get operation doesn't change the end result. It means that whenever you execute the get operation, it won't affect the result that you want. So no matter how many times you run the code, if the infrastructure or configuration is already present, it won't make any change. Let's take an example here. Or let's see this example here. We have a user who is working with Terraform to deploy three servers or resources. Let's remove one of them. Now let's rerun the Terraform code, the same one again. Here, it will create the one that was missing. And as you rightly might be thinking, it won't recreate the already existing ones. And thus, it makes sure that it maintains the state. And that is why tools like Terraform or the factor that is idempotency is really important when it comes to resource management. And once you have provisioned your infrastructure resources for your application, you can as well use config management to ensure that you have the right updates and values across all the servers that you intend to. That's where IAC and config management work hand in hand. If you have further doubts, let's see what Terraform says about itself. Yes, it is rightly mentioned here. Configuration management tools install and manage software on a machine that already exists. That is what I said previously. We in real time as well use it to automate tasks on the already existing servers. And we might do that manually if we are working on a few servers like three or four or five. But if there are 50 or 100 servers, we can't do that or we can't possibly do that. Yes, we can do it manually if we want to work for a whole year just doing that, but we want to save cost and time. And the best way is to automate things and converting existing manual work to an automation process. And that is something that we all look forward to. And if you read the Terraform documentation, it rightfully says that Terraform is not a configuration management tool and it allows existing tooling to focus on its strengths like bootstrapping and initializing resources. The main focus for us is to create resources and maintain a state which can help us keep the resource creation stable and ensure whenever we want or whenever we want, we can deploy the same without having to worry about how the deployment would fare out. I hope by now you have some idea about infrastructure as code and why we are talking about it today and why we are talking about Terraform. When it comes to Terraform, as you are already aware by now, Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that lets you build, change and version infrastructure safely and effectively or efficiently. And we will talk about all these things like build, change and how we can version infrastructure as well. But you just need to wait for a few videos for that, I think. So you write the code for your required deployment or create templates to create Terraform code and you actually deploy them using the Terraform CLI or even use Terraform Cloud to orchestrate the whole or the total environment that you wish to run your application with. And that's all about Terraform. And that's what makes Terraform simple as it is. 
And as a developer or DevOps engineer, it becomes easier in a way to understand the requirement as per our architecture and then plan it and then apply the code to create the resources on cloud. When it comes to cloud resources provisioning, you would feel how would Terraform know which environment I'm working and which cloud hosting I'm working with. And that's a totally valid question to ask. And for that, Terraform provides with integration with cloud service providers and on-premise hosting services such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud and orchestration tools such as Kubernetes and that on Terraform is also called as providers which are a logical abstraction of an upstream API. They are also responsible for understanding API interactions and exposing resources. So let's suppose you want to create an EC2 instance or CloudWatch alarm. In that case, Terraform needs a way to understand what type of resource that you want to create and on which cloud platform you are going to do that. And for each specific resource, Terraform provider provides you with modules and resources that can help you create resources that you want. And we will discuss about providers in detail in the videos coming up. But I just wanted to make sure that you know what you're getting into. And the blue tick that you're seeing right now on the AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform and Kubernetes, they are indicating that they are official providers for Terraform. And the green ticks are the partner providers, which are Alibaba Cloud and Oracle cloud infrastructure and there are thousands other community providers as well which make Terraform stand out among the crowd and I have also given the link for the providers you also can go and check them out that is https registry.terraform.io browse slash providers you can go there and you can check the whole list of providers that Terraform has so remember one thing very clearly when it comes to using Terraform, you need to write the infrastructure code that has the resource modules and entities, plan them, target them and apply them in order for those resources to be created on the platform that you're working on. So remember this plan, target. So target is something that you may or may not be using always, but plan, target and apply. These three steps are core steps in deploying resources when it comes to Terraform. Now that we have a bit of idea of what we are going to do with Terraform, let's start off with the installation. So I'll be installing Terraform on Windows and Ubuntu, but we have a list of supporting operating system uh, that you can have Terraform on. So you can use Terraform with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, Solaris. And now let's see how we can install Terraform on Windows. Okay, in order to install Terraform on Windows, so first thing that we need to do is we need to go to Google and we need to type Terraform and then we'll go to the website www.terraform.io and just click on the link here. And this is the web page for Terraform by HashiCorp. And you can see we have like two options, open source that is self-managed and which is always free. That is what we want. And that is what we want to download. And there is Terraform Cloud as well, which is a type of enterprise solution for uh, cloud resource management. And that is something that we'll not use now. So for us, the main focus is to download the open source one. So just click on download here and it'll come to the install Terraform page where you can see we have uh, all the operating system that are supported right now and the version that is 1.3.6, which is the latest one. So the main focus for us is to download and install Terraform so that you so that we can use the Terraform CLI and we can work on that. So here we have Mac OS, we have Windows, we have Linux, we have FreeBSD, we have OpenBSD, we have Solaris and, and Linux, we have Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, Fedora, Amazon Linux and Homebrew. So for Mac OS, it is very simple. If you have a brew package manager, you can just install it using brew. For Windows, you need to download the binary file. Uh, either you can use the 86 version or the 32 version or the 64 version. I'll be downloading the AMD 64 version. And I'll also show you uh, how we can do that on Ubuntu or the Linux version as well. So let's go to the Windows one and we have the AMD 64 here. Just uh, click on download. So it will download uh, the package for you or uh, the uh, zip file for you. So now once you download this, we can just place it in the folder path that we want. So let's just paste it here. And this is a zip file, so you can just right click on this and extract. Sorry, I added it to the favorites, which I don't need. So I'll just right click on this and I'll extract it. 
And once you extract this, you will have this folder within which you'll have the terraform.exe. And that is what you need. <laughs> this, is the, <laughs> this is the installation. There are a few more steps that we will do, but this is all that that you need to install Terraform. And let us go to this path. And here, what happens is we'll just cd to this path and uh, we'll just list out the files that we have so we have the terraform.exe binary so in order to just use it you can just type terraform being in that path for that exe file so you will get all the options so that's it you have installed terraform right now and i can also execute some commands like terraform hyphen version which will give me the version that is v1.3.6 on windows amd64 but this is not something that we would want, isn't it? So let's close this. We would want to exactly like uh, run it from anywhere that we want. But if we do this, what happens is we get this error that is Terraform is not recognized as an internal or external command. So now the current path is not able to find the exe file. So we have to make sure or we have to ensure that it is able to. So how it will be able to? So we have to add this path in the system variables or the environment variables so close this so go to start and here just type environment yeah you get this edit the system environment variables just click on this and you will get the system properties dialog box and here you have this option for uh, setting the environment variables so just click on this and uh, here we have user variables for pytholic that is for my user so you have the path option here the path variable just double click on this and here we need to add the path for the terraform.exe so how we do that we can just click on new click on browse go to the desktop where we have that particular uh, exe so this is within this folder so the terraform.exe is so the terraform.exe is within this folder path so i'll just click on ok so if i'll just expand this you can see the whole path listed here and that is what we want so now once you're done just click on ok you have set it for the path you can as well do this on your system path as well or the system variable as well by clicking or by editing this particular environment variable set for path but for now we'll just click on ok and we are fine with that now open the terminal once again and just type terraform yes now we are able to access it from anywhere that we want and in order to check this you can just execute this command as well get command terraform i am opening a partial for this and you can see it is pointing it to the path where we have kept the exe file i'll just broaden this a bit so that we see the exact result okay so the command type is application the name is terraform.exe and the path is this so that is where it is trying to access the command or the executable so that's it for the terraform installation on windows so now let us install on ubuntu and as we know that uh, we can use a ubuntu machine on our aws account itself so this is good so you can use uh, terraform on an existing server or uh, machine that you have ubuntu machine that you have but i wanted to create a ec2 instance and then uh, i wanted to install terraform on that so that i can share this as well because there's some additional information that you can also use so just go to your aws account okay so this instance is running now so just right click on this go to connect and then ec2 instance connect use the ec2 instance connect and then just connect to this so this will give you a browser's perspective of browser login for that particular instance that we have just now created so that's good enough for us just to install this so the first step for us is to do a wget and i'll just copy this command and i'll just paste it here so this is the command just let us paste and let us run this copy the second line and let us paste it let us just hit the enter button here so now it has also 
signed in the list of sources that the HashiCorp repository has. Now I'll just these two steps were to just update the repositories. Now you can just install it. Yeah, that's it. Now just type Terraform. Yes, it is working. Terraform hyphen version. Okay. Terraform V136 on Linux AMD 64. So now as you can see, we have installed Terraform on Windows and Ubuntu. Thanks everyone for having the patience and watching this video and if you did like it then please do hit the subscribe button on the channel and please do make sure that you like the video if you did like it and if you want to watch more videos on this channel then please make sure that you subscribe and also very important thing please do hit the bell notification icon so that whenever I upload a new video you get notified about that and if you enjoyed this video then I'm sure that you'll be enjoying the videos that are here you can go and watch them as well so i'll meet you in the next one until then it's sam from pytholic signing off cheers <laughs>